Okay, we are now recording and we are now See, and I'm looking at the videos now, and I know I, uh, I tend to look down, so I'm going to start trying, so after seeing these things, and I hate my voice, uh, I'm starting to at least do a little better with the presentations, I hope. Anyway, here we go. The next thing we're going to do in this class is a little bit in photography, because you have words, you have pictures, duh. Those are the building blocks of a graphic design. And it is better for you to be able to take your own pictures. And those are really the, the biggest elements, words, words and pictures. So what we're doing is uh, the next assignment, and you'll have a week, including over the holiday if you want to do the 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 next photo thing and i'm going to ask for four pictures and we'll talk about the four pictures uh shortly same subject um wide or far away medium close and sh super close of your subjects to help you tell a story and i'll get to that in a little bit but you'll have a week and a half now to do that um so that'll be due on September 11th. We have no class on Monday. Uh, so we can sleep in a little bit. What I'm hoping, as I said to the people who were here live early, is I'm working with the library to get a lab day, not eight o'clock in the morning. We have an eight to 10 um, block here. So from nine to 10, I would like to use the library and do a in-person, um, which we'll record, um, lab on InDesign and Photoshop. Just a quick primer for those of you who are using those programs. But for my purposes and your purposes, given all the technical hoo-hahs we're facing, I'm allowing you to use any software to do these assignments. But this, these are the industry standards. The library says they'll do it, we just haven't scheduled a date yet. And again, this is uh, because you guys requested it and, and I really wanna do the best I can for you. Anyway, so that's up and coming. Colorization is due on Friday and next week, four photos. Now, the thing is, uh, I'm putting this up, uh, the basic digital primer up here. Uh, nobody teaches these things about memory because this is the thing that comes up all the time in cameras, in your phone, in videos. Um, some people had trouble saying that they can't use the Adobe products because they don't have the computer memory. So whatever you're doing, you need to have this in your back of your mind and it makes a difference. Um, certainly in your documents, in your designs, because if you have a big complicated design that takes up too much space in the computer, a lot of people, you can't, you can't email it it won't go through a lot of emails. So all of that stuff is um, relevant to bits and bytes and memory. So that's the first thing I'll go over. Uh, anyway, camera phone, no, no matter what you got, it's reducing your pictures or your words to uh, digits, you know, switches. Uh, you know, digital is more a really a an attitude, a state of mind as much as it is a, um, a as much as it is technical. Digital turning everything to a switch on and off and different switches on and off make a dot lighter lighter dark. 
uh, analog is more of an attitude. Uh, di the opposite of digital is analog. That is something that is a smooth line that doesn't start, that doesn't get turned into, into dots. Okay, two kinds of memory. Storage memory or ROM, read only. Um, these are, you know, here's your bits and bytes. One bit turns one switch on and off, a byte, eight bits. That's about enough to make a letter in your computer. A kilobyte, a paragraph, megabyte is a medium sized novel or one good quality picture, and here's a gigabyte. 164 gigabytes is a terabyte. These days we are going with the cloud, with videos and everything like that, you use up gigabytes real quick. Now, that's just storage. The other thing that you need to think about is what we call RAM memory. That is the pipeline that you're pushing this information through. Um, if you're looking at a computer, one of the better uh, things to buy is extra RAM. RAM is the open space that's moving these digits. So, I mean, if you have a video and, um, and, and it's really complicated and long, you are pushing a lot of digits through a very narrow pipeline and either it takes very, very long or it doesn't work at all. You've seen it all the time on websites when something doesn't load, particularly pictures. Um, happens all the time on Instagram. That's because we have too much information, too much of a complicated picture going through too narrow a, uh, a pipe. So the RAM is the width of your pipe. So 32 megabytes of RAM on a computer is standard 32 or 64. You're starting to spend some money when you have 128 or 256 megs of RAM, but that, well, all that's doing is giving you a wider pipe to push through information. So that's what makes it faster. This is why um, some, some of your computers cannot handle the Adobe because they're very complex programs and you can't push pictures and videos and all these commands through you know, four megs of RAM. So that's something to look at, at on your computers. This is why we don't use Chromebooks. Chromebooks, fine for downloading stuff, but they don't have much memory of either kind. When we, when we go to pictures, it takes every bit of information and captures it in a little capacitor like a like a, a light bright when you were a kid. You know, it turns on, it captures every, it reduces everything to dots and every dot is part of the picture. Your CCD is the thing that used to be analogous to what used to be film. Uh, the bigger the chip, the more information you can get and the better your picture. The downside is the better your picture, the harder it is to move it through the system. Phones have smaller lenses and smaller chips. They have, and they don't have lenses. They are good for the internet because it's a smaller, no, it's less information, less uh, fine a picture but a phone doesn't have as much information and it pushes things through faster. Still, a good camera will give you a better picture for print. 
you're going to print something or make a poster, your phone, once you blow it up, it's not going to be very good. Pictures are made of pixels or picture elements. They're a single point of light captured digitally. Um, you have a computer screen is 1,000 by 1,064 by 1,200 pixels. That's a standard computer screen. Um, and it's like the print on a balloon. When you get a picture on your phone, um, it's a tiny little image. As you blow it up, it's the same number of pixels. They're just blown up bigger and bigger and bigger and they get fuzzier. Standard, okay, a standard computer screen. This is an old one. Actually, I should update it. This is now, computer screens are better 1000 by 1200. They used to be 600 by 480. Okay, I admit that. Okay, pixels versus dots. Um, Uh, a pixel is the little dot you see on the computer screen. It is not the dot that's in the computer, in your, in your phone or on your camera, it's the dot on the computer screen. An internet picture is um, usually 72 dots an inch. Um, Newspaper quality, 100 dots. Magazine quality is 300 dots an inch. And here's megapixels. The difference is, and I have it here. Can I blow this up? View, do, 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 do. You can see the difference in these two pictures blown up. Yes, I was sweaty and I weighed 40 more. I've, I've lost 40 pounds since I, this picture was taken. But anyway, you can see how the Parthenon's a lot fuzzier at 72 DPI, but it's only 19 kilobytes. This picture, a lot sharper, same picture just save differently. So it's not in any better focus. The difference is resolution. This picture is good for print, but it would take 10 times longer to download on your computer because it's 10 times more information. Higher resolution takes, looks better in print, but takes longer to download. Lower resolution is faster. Again, internet style picture, print style picture. This is the picture that may look in better focus, but it's going to take a lot longer to download on the internet. You'd, a computer screen's not going to give you this fine detail. So, unless I blew it up, but if I make it normal size, you don't really notice the difference. So, this is the two things you're always balancing in um, not just pictures, in layouts, in document size. Um, you know, uh, again, formatting for the internet versus formatting for print are two different things. That's really what I want you to get out of that. And okay, large photos take up a lot of storage and color photos take up more memory. JPEG and GIF files remove pixels for easy storage. You ever see like little animated GIFs? Obviously you have for memes and whatnot. They're low resolution and fuzzy, but they don't take up a lot of space. So they move quick. Um, what they do is that when you save or make a, a GIF or a JPEG, you are, it takes out every other pixel or every 10th pixel, depending on how you uh, have it set. And then when you call it back, the computer program reconstitutes them. 
The problem is we call that JPEGing. If you save your JPEG multiple times, um, it takes different uh, pixels each time and it, 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 ten, it, it eventually gets fuzzy. Uh, here's what, that, what those terms mean. TIFF, BMP, PICT, EPS are not compressed. If you're going to save a picture, TIFF or any of those ones, that is good. But they are larger and they move slower through the computer. Um, a PDF file turns everything to a picture. And a picture, again, is a larger file than a print file. So you, it takes more memory. Don't ex this is one of the good things. We don't do uh, tests in this class because this is hard to remember. And I know that. I want you to be able to kind of understand the issues conceptually rather than sit around and figure out resolution and pictures. But when we do photo editing, I'll show you the difference that it makes. Hello, someone just came in through the open door. Hello. Say hello to the class. Ah. Hello, class. Good morning, Jupiter. Hello. She says hello. Okay. We will walk in about a half hour. Uh, anyway, so that's the hard part of today. Now the, the, um, the, the easier part of this is some basic picture taking stuff. <coughs> oh, poo. <coughs> what? No, no, we have to do, we have, I have to do some work. We need to, we'll go out later. We know who's in charge around here. Can you tell us what camera you personally use for your photography? You, to be honest, yeah. I use, shush, I use, um, oh, come on, um, be honest, I use, um, uh, I use my phone mostly, because I'm sharing, and you could be my, uh, you could be my Facebook friend, any one of you. I can't ask you, but you can follow my stuff. Um, I'm posting most of my photos these days on social media. Yeah. But since you asked, because this really is relevant. I was doing a friend's, um, I was doing uh, a, a friend's um, high school portraits um, the other day. And I have my Nikon D, uh, D5 and this is the longer lens is a really good portrait lens because it gives you some nice. Anyway, the difference is my friend is going to print some pictures right. and put them in a frame. So I use this camera, social media, just like I was showing you. Uh, this is fine for social media. You know, it depends on the kind of thing. I'm not going to do wildlife. If I have deer in the backyard, I'm going to pull this out. And, but I shoot a lot of my video using this. So, you know, it depends on your needs. Thank that's you. Re that's really what it comes down to. Uh, anyway, basic photo tips. Take a lot of pictures. This is what the phone is good for because it uploads to the, to the cloud. Uh, 
this fills up. You got to be careful. Um, you take, a, but first take a lot of pictures, a lot of, you know, you take several of every subject. Don't get just one. If you have Bigfoot, uh, the Loch Ness Monster, Amelia Earhart, and a space alien all in the same room, and you have one picture and your thumb's over it, you miss it. So take a lot. It gives you choices, throw out the bad ones, take five, and please take five or six of each subject, different settings. Get close. A lot of people, um, a lot of people um, use this as your number one thing. Um, uh, I, I prefer it to, let's blow this big up. Okay, picture. let us see, uh, you can see them big. Okay, same picture. We will do this in photo editing. You see how getting close works a lot better? This is Ian. I lived, uh, I spent a summer in Ireland and you go to the museum and he jumps out uh, at you and tries to scare you, but um, he's an actor. But you can see, we have all sorts of stuff in this picture that doesn't add to it. Here you get the point. Um, the, in when we do photo editing, half of what we do will be cropping. Very seldom should you have the whole picture. The, it is better to get a little closer because as you blow it up, it'll get fuzzier. You know, again, like a, the print on a balloon. But a closer picture, nine out of 10 times, is a better picture. Point of entry, speaking of Ireland. I put this together in my summer in Ireland. I was teaching this. I, got, yeah, I taught photography in Ireland for a summer. You want a good gig? Anyway point of entry. Nice landscape, but with this little old cupola out there that gives you something to look at. When you look at a photo, you read it like a design. It's like having in your graphic design a little, a capital letter, an anchor, a bar at the bottom of your resume, something to look at. Otherwise, it's just a nice scene. Here, having something to look at draws you to it. I like this picture, so I use it for a couple of things. Rule of thirds. This also works in graphic designs. This works in print. This picture, draw a tic-tac-toe uh, board on it. There in the crosshairs of thirds, thirds, thirds. Thirds, when you do a landscape, don't put the horizon in the middle. That splits it in half. Horizon on the top third or the bottom third. Tree, one third. All of that there makes this a nice picture. Dominant element. Again, it's the person, not the house. Uh, she's the tour guide. And there's, and there's the house. Have something just like, um, just like we did in graphic designs and resumes, have something stand out. If you just have a crowd of people, you don't know where to look. You need to have something to start viewing. Leading lines, here we are. This is St. Patrick's Cathedral and the saint is buried right underground there. Uh, leading lines lead you through, help you move through and read the picture. Diagonals. A straight line does not move you across as much as a diagonal line. That really moves you through, through it. Okay, avoid centering. Did this on purpose. This picture, he's centered and we have all this stuff going on back there that detracts. Uh, here, we cut that out. He's in one third. This is in two thirds. 
Horizon on the top third works a lot better. Again, centering, no, we have all this stuff down here that doesn't help. Making it off center in the thirds, and you see Horizon is pretty much in the middle here. Horizon at the bottom, Horizon at the thirds makes this a better picture. You notice that my crop pictures are not, this is your basic four by five or five by seven format. This picture would be more like an eight by four. The world does not work in these proportions. Don't be afraid to make your pictures long and narrow or tall and narrow. Get to the side. If I did a portrait in, in this class, if we had a live class, getting everybody in front of you, you'd have gaps between you. I would take a picture from the side and you get these nice leading lines. Okay, get different perspectives, get high, get low. I'm right in their face. I'm full, I am uh, I, I, I'm getting my, uh, my pants full of swan crap there. But if I didn't, if I didn't get low, I just get the top of his head. All about lighting. Again, the light here makes that stand out. Light and shadow, Let's, we can look at lighting. Okay, Base, those are some basic things to think about in any subject. Okay, and, and here is next week's. Um, Then this is where we get into next week's assignment. How to get, take a picture and then uh, tell a story with it. What makes a story? Okay, here you go. I have very good health. The one thing I do is I get prone to kidney stones. I can tell you, I had kidney stones, they hurt. Yes, that says more than uh, that says more than uh, they hurt. Yes, can you imagine that actually went through my system and I got the fishnet and pulled it out of the toilet just for this assignment, the things I do for you. Anyway, but yeah, that says, says it a lot more than that. Story tells information. Here's, oh, it's playing on its own. Uh, information and, okay, Bluegrass Monday, and there's where Bluegrass Monday is. <clears throat> Emotion, I love this one. Happy face, not happy face. <clears throat> Let's go back to it. Picture tells a story. You know what the real story is? I'm here with the long lens. He liked me taking his picture. She didn't like me taking her picture. That is, that's all that is. These people don't know each other, but it's one of those kind of graphic ones. I have won awards for that. This is Mother Goose and Mother Goose Day in downtown Portland when Portland was a happy place. Without both, story's ineffective. Sunlight, anybody, how do you get a better picture of sunlight? Sunlight streaming down through the trees onto somebody going, I'm saved, you know, something like that, or over a city. Squirrel in the, in the tree. All right, it's about relationships. This is a make a wish boy. I'm proud of this one. Everybody in the picture, the whole family was there. This ran in uh, the Portland Oregonian. So yeah, and everybody's facing it. It's a happy picture. Uh, subjects in the environment. Again, he's going uphill. There is a chain. I mean, it's being disabled. That gives you the sense of what it's like. Uh, subjects and artifacts, we will do this shortly. This is a glass harmonica of time and place. See, this is at the red line. This is in, in Boston. Oh yeah, interactions with environment. She makes the picture. She's going, ah! 
artifacts are used. Okay, four pictures. This is the assignment for next week. Medium, everybody does the medium. Here, here is our subject. Wide or far for perspective to see where she is on the street. Close, okay. And then super close. See, those are the four pictures I want. Super close, close, wide, and medium. Those are for next week. Again, medium, everyone usually takes the medium shot. That's usually the establishing shot. Wide, to give you a sense of where you are, close, and then super close. If you can get four of those pictures out of your uh, subject, you can make the story. Again, too much, too busy, you notice I cropped this picture to there. Too much, you don't know what's going on. What's about makes it interesting? She makes it interesting. Dominant element, again, she's bigger than everybody else and they're interacting. Ah, one of my favorites, uh, avoid posing. What's wrong with posing anybody? It looks fake. It is fake. This, this person, she has done some modeling you notice she has her sleeves rolled down. Why? Because she's got sleeves on her skin. She is a very tattooed person. And, you know, that's not a bad thing, but that's different than what this happy, bright student, she's more of a alternative person. And so that's not really her, but she's conveying something. So yeah, it's fake. Okay, sequencing, this is for video. And we'll show this shortly. A for action, B for background, C for climax, reaction or interaction, E for end. Okay, we'll see all of these things together here. <laughs> uh, any requests? C, by the way, Look at how, when I put this on YouTube, see how pixelated this picture is? If I made this small, it would look better. So I welcome to it. This is what happens in video. This is Benjamin Franklin's glass harmonica, a musical instrument he invented in 1761 based on the principle of rubbing. Okay, here is the super close. You saw the medium. Here is super close. A wet finger around a wine glass. And now the end. Very nice. <laughs> I think it needs a little work. See, it needs a little work. Cute little end there. So, but you see the different pictures of the subject makes the point. That's what I want you to think of next week. If you only can get one picture out of your uh, thing, it's probably not much of a story. So that's what I really want you to think about. What makes a good series or story? Because we will be doing these in our layouts and when we do the class project. Like if you did a bakery, you have the outside, you have, um, you know, you have the outside, you have a close up of the cooking, you have a medium with somebody at the counter. Somebody, a restaurant's a good example of a good subject. Just the dog, too many people do their dogs and cats. And you can get 
a close up or a medium of the dog, but having the dog do something. Juniper loves to play soccer. So that's what we will do next. We'll go to the soccer field and have a wide shot of her at the soccer field, close up of the face, medium of her chasing the ball. See, having those four pictures forces you to do a story. Have your people do something. Have your subjects do something. That's the whole point of having the four pictures. Close, medium, far, super, yeah. close, super close, medium, far. Think about that. Uh, something to do, certainly it's a good thing to do over the holiday. So that's what we do. Uh, so that's again, get you ahead of things for the holiday. We'll start with photo editing next time probably. Hopefully we'll be able to do something live. Uh, Is there a way you can send us a link to that video in the email, please? Yep. I will put out the, that is embedded in, it's, it's, you know what, it's already da, 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 in your, it's already. Uh, is that the PowerPoint you got us in on the? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> it, uh, it is right there. The link is embedded in the multimedia documentary thing. So okay, thank you. Right there. Uh, anyway, other other questions. So we're allowed to do pictures on anything, like you said, like a bakery or yeah, an object. Anything you want. The one thing I have to say, they have to be pictures taken for this class. I can't uh, we we'll, can't accept something from your uh, you know vacation last year when you could take a vacation to the beach. I want you to take them for this class. Okay, sounds good. Okay, anything else? Okay, four pictures next week, and then we'll start putting words and pictures together after that. Last class, you said something about us having one photograph. That's, that's well, what's no, you know, probably I, correct. I, uh, I thought about that, and then I looked at what we did before, uh, and just given the schedule, I thought I'd would I change my mind. Jump so right we in. we don't have school. anything to do Friday? When I looked at what we had, uh, I, I, it looked better that we needed to do the four at once. Oh, Sandra, she asked if we had anything to do Friday. I think- Friday, we have the colorization. The colorization of your text. Okay, that's it. Yep. It's an easy one. So you can get ahead and do this one. Okay, anything else? And I'll have the, I'll have the flyers uh, graded certainly by next week. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, we will go back to it. I will post this recording shortly for those who weren't here, but it's been fun and I will see you next week. Have All right. a, have a good weekend. weekend.